Aloha, it is Dave Lawrence. How you doing? A big mahalo for tuning in today. I am in an, uh, an unusual place, and I'm at Hawaii Music Works. That's the name of where I'm at, correct? And I'm uh, with the band Emki. We're in Pearl Ridge, Uptown. Is that basically where we're at? And it's Kira, Mari, Esri, and Peyton. And a big aloha and mahalo, you guys. Thank you so much for taking some time to do this. Oh, thank you. All right, you're quite welcome. And uh, this is an interesting band. It's a, a, a teen rock phenomenon from here in Hawaii. They've been around for a number of years. And it goes all the way back to 2005. Uh, I guess because of ages, and I happen to know their ages, Mari is 16, Kira 15, Esri 11, and Peyton also 15. Correct. So I'm guessing that Kira and Mari would have the best recollection of how did the band start in 2005. Do you want to tell this one? We can tell it together. Okay, you start it. <laughs> okay. Well, it started. Um, oh yeah, it started with Kira and I. We were in piano class, right? And um, <laughs> we took piano together, yeah. and then we started voice lessons. Oh, we started piano when we were five, voice mm-hmm. when we were six or seven. And then, well, this is my sister, so she just kind of came up. And then um, after that, we started guitar, and then our dad just kind of had this idea, like, oh, what if we what if we kind of made something out of that? And then, well, Peyton kind of came around after that because he is the brother of our last drummer. Right, and the name of the band, it's a good good way to lead into the band. So it's E-M-K-E-M-K, but the first drummer was Elias, right? Is that the... Mm-hmm. And then it came, then Peyton's brother, Perry? Yes. And then Peyton. Yes. So there's one letter that's not represented in the four-letter name, correct? Yeah. That's, and that's represented, I guess, I guess Elias will have some... That's his, his way of getting recognition yeah. <laughs> long in, into the future. So the very first, uh, so it starts with voice, then it's piano. Those were your first? Piano first. Piano first, yeah. then voice. Mm-hmm. So the two of you, you meet, you're playing piano together. Um, and where did the guitar, how long did it take before guitar became like, a th- I, I guess you would say, a third practice or instrument? I started guitar first, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, right before I turned eight, I wanted to play guitar. Um, I just had an interest in it because my dad plays piano and he doesn't play guitar, so I wanted to do something that he doesn't know how to do. <laughs> wow. Okay, so he can't play. That's a great, a great end of the story here because Mark Santos, the father of Kira and Esri, instrumental really in the shaping of the band uh and and we'll talk a little bit about that so you picked up the guitar largely because he didn't play it yeah what was he is he a singer as well yes he's our voice teacher too right so he okay so he's your voice teacher and and he can play the keyboards Mm -hmm. i'm assuming um so the band starts in 2005 and the classic rock side of the band it starts right away as your father's way of sort of giving you songs to work on. How, do, how does the song list evolve for the group? The song list. Like, well, how, do you, how do you end up with those particular tunes? I don't know. First, we started off with um, artists like Ali and AJ and... Um, um, kind of the pop yeah. Disney Channel artists sure. when they, um, from a long time ago, like Hilary Duff and stuff. Mm-hmm. But after that, then... I don't know why my dad thought of it, but then he just thought, oh, what if we made like a kid rock band instead of like a kid pop band, I guess. And then he thought of doing groups that were really famous back then. And he did songs that um, were really big um, when he was that age or however old he was. Sure. So it was, so we've really isolated. It's your dad who came up with what has been the unique bit so far, the thing that's probably brought a lot of attention to the band, which is to look on stage and there's a bunch of really young kids yeah. and they're playing classic rock songs <laughs> with passion. So when he introduced you to these songs, and as you pointed out, you were more familiar with maybe contemporary music that was more geared t- towards your ages, did you immediately like the music? Did you find that it, it related to you? I didn't think I would like it at first because I thought, oh, it's old music because my parents like it. Sure. But after hearing it, and since we already played, um, we played piano and we sang and like we started guitar, um, we took an interest to how, I guess, the int- the instruments played together because it had a different melodic quality than a lot of the contemporary stuff. Ah, so what you're saying, sort of, if I can paraphrase, is once you, re- once you started experimenting with the songs, you realize that these older songs, the way they were written and structured, 
there was something interesting about the relationship between the instruments, and yeah. so you kind of developed your own passion for this music. Yeah. And Mari, same same basic deal. Any any particular thing where you, where it occurred to you, wow, I'm playing music that's totally not my own or not from my generation, but yet I, I like it. Um, I actually don't remember <laughs> how I felt about the music when I first heard it, but now I love it. So. <laughs> and so you identify with it, all of you, and the. Uh, so we we learned that it was so it was Mark's idea to really start the group. Yeah, actually, yeah. Wow, well, he gets a lot of credit in this. <laughs> and uh, through so 2005, you guys start. Esri, 11 years old, so you would have been five back at the time. When did you start learning about music, and how did you get involved with playing with the group? Well, I started piano when I was four, and I also started voice when I was four, and I started guitar around early seven and um i just started bass and drums recently and how so when did you when how old were you when you first started playing as a member of the group as a member of the group i was probably around five at five they had you out on stage yeah and you were singing only um no i was playing piano mostly and singing okay right i've seen some early videos with you doing both (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it is uh, it is remarkable. And Peyton, your brother. So Elias, not your brother. Elias. No. <laughs> Perry is your brother, though. Yeah. Do you know? Did you know the first drummer of the group? Um, no, not really. And how did you end up getting the gig to replace the second drummer in the band? I think Perry recommended me. Yeah. Yeah, and he got old. Yeah. <laughs> and and we, I was hanging out with the band the other day, and they sort of explained this to me. So there is something to do with the age. Uh, you want to all be around the same ages. So you, there was a bassist who worked with you two, who if people look in, in different videos, uh, Casey is, is the bassist's name. Uh, she's no longer with you, and she's she was too old, kind of like Perry. Right? Yeah, they kind of thought that, um, uh, well, since they're older than us, they kind of wanted to do their own thing after a while, and it's like, oh, it's our thing too, so they decided to go. Right, like I guess they felt. I get what you're saying. They felt this is, this is becoming a thing for these kids, and I'm not really a part of it. So it's time to let them yeah. develop into their into their own thing. Um, Peyton, the drumming. Wh- you're 15. How old were you when you started playing the drums? Um, I think I was about nine years old when I started. So you have six years experience yeah. behind the drum kit, uh, and the inspiration to play the older brother. That's my brother, yeah. Okay, so having an older brother key, so we're seeing parental thing, older brothers uh, as being key. No older siblings for you three that that influenced you guys. It was strictly Mark. Yeah, because yeah. I'm the older sibling for you. You would be that. Older <laughs> <sibling>. <laughs> um, when it comes to, uh, we talked about this the other day a little bit, but I was a little, I was curious about the the routine. So when a person like myself watches you on stage and you play like Van Halen Dreams or or, uh, or Right Now, songs I, I've grown up with and heard my whole life. And you play, you guys play them with such passion. You play them in so many ways like they're your own songs. And I think that's probably going to be one of the bits that helps make your band, um, regardless of how powerful your originals are. When someone hears something that familiar and it's so incongruous to see these, these young people playing it with so much soul, it makes me wonder about the routine that he has for prepping you. Describe for me, if you will, and you can all take turns doing it if you want. What is the practice like? How does it how does it begin? Run me through what it takes to get to that level. How many hours a day? And sort of describe the kind of practice that he puts you through, the lessons that he's given you. For learning the classic rock song? Yeah, and, and for learning your stage demeanor in general. Well, we start with like just listening to it, getting the feel for it, um, and then... We get the basic chords and go through the song form together. We don't. It's not perfect at all. We just kind of get, oh, it's not. This sounds right here, and um, we listen to it over and over again just to get used to it. And then we work on the details on our own. So you're listening to the original versions of it. Yeah. Over and over. So and then all, we listen to the live versions too, just in case. <laughs> right. So get from. So you get familiar with the song, how the song really is, not just a version of the song, but but you hear it in a couple of different contexts. All all four of you independently are listening to the songs. You take them home, and then it's like a it's like almost like homework in a way. Yeah. <laughs> right. Was that what you would think of it as too? And so these songs, you, you take them home, you listen to them. How does it? How does the actual performance of it come to be so 
profound. Like when you count off the beginning of dreams, did, is that a, a bit from Mark? How you guys will count off the intro to the song? Yeah, he kind of. Um, sometimes we have difficulties choosing who wants to count off the song, but we made Peyton do it. <laughs> when that one, you both do right. It's you and Ezri, sort of like you oh, yell yeah. something, and then Ezri does the actual count. Yeah. How- um. At first, he gives us the when we first started out. The first classic rock song that we kind of added audience participation to um, was Journey. Journey. It was Journey, our Journey medley. So after that, then we kind of got used to how it should be performed in a way that the audience would want to have fun with it. So we kind of just added those little things into the rest of our classic rock songs to make them sound kind of fun. So it's almost it's a la Paramore in some ways too. Yeah. <laughs> which is not a bad thing. So you're infusing some of that youthful energy maybe and making giving the songs your own twist. 